This is Valley News Live at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kaylee Chella. It was one of those hold on to your hat days today, but the wind has finally begun dying down a little bit. Let's toss things over to Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson right away to find out just how long this windy weather will last. Hutch. Kaylee, thanks so much. It's not as gusty as it was earlier and it's not as white as it was earlier either. Their tower cam time lapse this morning around that eight o'clock time frame as the ground was coated with wet and fluffy flakes about a half inch worth in Grand Forks. Then the wind blew and blew and blew. And it's been a cold and blustery day across the area. Here is a look at those peak wind gusts that kissed 60 miles per hour in the Cooperstown area. 47 mile per hour gusts today in Carrington and Grand Forks. 43 miles per hour. Lakes Country saw some 50 mile per hour gusts as well. Clearing out as our snow showers shift off to the east. Our winds still gusty where we see the orange colors. We're upwards of 35 to 40 miles per hour. Things quieting down a pinch, but still 10 to 20 miles per hour out to the west. Temperatures are slip sliding away, and we're on our way to some single digit morning readings. So it's going to be cold tonight, windy tonight, cold for the weekend, and a potential storm system that could bring significant snow to our area as we go into next week. Here's a snapshot of what Wednesday looks like. We've declared Wednesday a first alert weather day. I'll have hour by hour details on this, but suffice it to say, ugh, heading towards April, and it looks like Mother Nature has some April Fool's things going on. I'll spell it all out in a moment. She is a cold one. She is. Thanks, Hutch. <laughs> yep. Fargo police are still asking for your help in finding a missing 12-year-old girl. Police say Kayla Mattson ran away from home at 11 this morning. She's described as 4 foot 6, 110 pounds with brown hair and blonde, excuse me, blonde hair and brown eyes. Kayla was last seen wearing a black and gray Columbia sweatshirt. And if you see her, you are asked to call Fargo police. Jurors deliberated for almost five hours today, but did not reach a verdict in the murder trial of 40 year old Raymond Gunn. Gunn is accused of shooting and killing 41 year old Eric Hayes last summer in a North Fargo gas station parking lot. Gunn's attorneys have argued that the shooting was an act of self defense as Hayes was attacking him and trying to steal Gunn's firearm. However, the state told jurors that the evidence shows that's just not true. Ask yourselves. Where in that sequence of events do you see Mr. Hayes stealing his gun? He couldn't have stolen it. It was in Mr. Gunn's hand. Mr. Gunn shot him. Clearly wasn't in Mr. Hayes's hand. Deliberations are expected to resume at 9 on Monday morning. If convicted, Gunn faces the rest of his life in prison. New developments in a story we first brought you last week. Tyler Jacob, a Winona, Minnesota native who had been teaching English and living in Ukraine since last year, is back with his family after being detained by Russian forces. According to a press release from Senator Amy Klobuchar's office, Jacob was detained in Russia for 10 days after attempting to flee Kherson, which was one of the first major cities to fall as Russia invaded. Today, Jacob's mom spoke with Senator Klobuchar in a Zoom call. It's been uh, a huge relief. With all that support, it pushed me to even try harder to make sure that he came home safe. And I cannot have done it without everybody's help. And I do appreciate everything from the bottom of my heart for everybody's prayers. Meanwhile, President Biden is back in Poland today, focusing on Ukraine's refugee and humanitarian crisis. It comes as we're learning more about that deadly bombing of a theater where civilians were sheltering. The president will continue his trip in Poland tomorrow, where he's expected to give a major address about Russia's invasion. The president has promised to let 100,000 Ukrainian refugees into the U.S. and pledged an additional billion dollars in humanitarian aid. While expressing disappointment that he can't safely travel into Ukraine, he will meet with refugees in Poland to hear their stories firsthand, like this mother who fled to save her young son. He asked me, Mom, will, will I see my birthday in August or no? Will it be alive? And I didn't know what to say to him. We're getting a closer look at the dangerous conditions and the horror the more than 3.7 million refugees have left behind as the UK Defense Ministry says Ukrainian forces are gaining ground against the Russian military, with forces retaking towns in the capital region. Every year, the Theodore Roosevelt Medora Foundation hires more than 300 summer workers from all over the world. And now, two friends who met there years ago are connecting in Poland to get needed supplies to Ukraine. Since 2008, Yurema 
Slonevsky has been leaving his home in Ukraine to spend the summer working in Medora. Along the friends he met there is Jason Mastin, who's currently living in Poland. When the war in Ukraine broke out, he immediately reached out to Slonevsky to find out what his friend needed. Everybody's the same. We all love each other. We all care about each other. You know, you got, you got individuals coming over there. They only know a few words of English. And you have Americans helping them out. Metzen is planning to take another load of supplies to the border next week, and if you'd like to help him, he set up a PayPal account. We've got a link to it on our website, valleynewslive.com. Polk County officials are offering a reward for information relating to a suspected arson. The fire happened at 32434 320th Street Southwest in Climax, Minnesota, and authorities are offering up to $5,000 for information that leads to the arrest and conviction of those involved. You can call the Arson Reward Hotline or the Polk County Sheriff's Department at the numbers on your screen. It's a Drug and Alcohol Fact Week, and a report from the Moorhead Police Department is painting a grim picture. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling joins us live in studio to break down the numbers. Aaron? Well, thanks, Kaylee. This graph here shows the overdoses in the city from 2017 to 2020. There has been a small increase in overdoses, but that number skyrocketed in 2021 with 50 non 55 non fatal cases alone and an additional eight doses overdoses that were fatal. You don't know what you're going to get. Unfortunately, with these drugs they are extremely, extremely addictive and the people want that want that hit of that medication that's not dosed appropriately. In 2017, the leading cause of death in Americans under the age of 50 was by overdose. Moorhead PD says it has seen an, also an influx in overdoses in the area from 2021 or 2021 to now, and those are the ones that just have been reported. Kaylee. Thanks, Aaron. I know the Lotus Center in Moorhead is a good resource for those who are struggling with addiction. New tonight at 10, state regulators are considering suspending Hennepin County Sheriff Dave, David Hutchinson in light of a drunken driving conviction. The Star Tribune reported today that the Minnesota Board of Peace Officer Standards and Training began an investigation shortly after Hutchinson crashed his county-owned SUV near Alexandria on December 8th. He pleaded guilty to fourth-degree misdemeanor drunken driving later that month. And the board is reviewing whether Hutchinson's law enforcement license should be suspended. It comes as yesterday the Minneapolis City Council voted to approve a new city police contract. The contract is for the years 2020 through 2022 and it provides retention and signing bonuses of up to $7,000 as well as re retroactive pay raises of 1, 1.5 and 2.5%. But city council members who voted no are angry. I do not want to vote for a contract like this that will essentially put more blood on every one of our hands because we failed to do anything to rein in one of the most dysfunctional police departments in the country. Supporters of the contract say not having disciplinary language in it gives the city more flexibility and that in 2020 and 2021 disciplinary cases have soared. 72 officers were disciplined in that time. That's more disciplinary action than the previous five years combined. The city is down 300 officers since George Floyd's murder. Minneapolis public school students could return to class Monday after a tentative deal was reached between the district and unions. The two unions are expected to vote over the weekend. Teachers have been on strike for more than two weeks. District officials hailed the deal in a news conference earlier today. We've seen uh, we have historic agreements that have uh, significantly raise pay for education support professionals, uh, hourly rates uh, up to four plus dollars an hour. He continued discussing the win, outlining new agreements around job protections and seniority and placement rights for associate educators and educators of color. The strike is the first one in the district in more than 50 years. Minnesota lawmakers are thinking about redesigning the state's flag and seal. Supporters of the change say the current flag is indistinct among other U.S. states and features imagery that's offensive to Native Americans. The flag features a man in the foreground farming with a Native American on a horse in the background. The Upper Sioux Tribal Chairman says the seal on the flag fails to come to terms with Minnesota's history of violence against Native Americans. Planned Parenthood of the North Central States, which includes the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, and Nebraska, received an unexpected donation. 
The company was gifted $20 million from billionaire th philanthropist Mackenzie Scott. It's the largest donation in the organization's history. Scott is the former wife of Amazon founder and CEO Jeff Bezos. She revealed that she has donated nearly $4 billion to 465 nonprofits, including $275 million to Planned Parenthood Federation of America. The number of active flu cases is on the rise across much of the United States, with the CDC reporting flu-related hospital admissions increased over each of the last seven weeks. After nearly non-existent levels last year as more people wore masks to avoid catching COVID, many health leaders feared that this flu season would be rough. However, the CDC says this season has been more mild than any of the four most recent seasons before the pandemic. An equipment failure is being blamed for causing an almost 15,000 gallon crude oil spill south of Tioga. The spill was reported by North Dakota Oil and Gas. XTO Energy says the spill was contained on site and all the oil has been recovered. A state inspector has been assigned to clean to monitor the cleanup. Still to come, the surprising thing one Minnesota vet found in the stomach of a bald eagle. Plus, in weather, we had a beautiful setting sun after a very windy day. Look at them clouds chugging along through the colorful skies over the area. Hmm, snowfall totals this season could be amended next week. We'll have details on a winter weather system heading our way. Coming up, weather's next.